Quilting feathers in irregularly shaped areas doesn't have to be difficult. Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy and welcome to the fabulous feathers free motion challenge. In the videos up to now, we have been learning how to quilt feathers in defined areas like blocks and triangle shapes, but not every quilt is gonna have the perfect area for quilting feathers. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you three different techniques for handling these areas using the feather designs that we've learned earlier in the video series. So if you haven't checked those out, be sure to watch those first. I promise it's not that difficult. So let's get to it. When dealing with larger areas, sometimes quilting one long continuous feather can be tricky, especially if you're working on a small throated sewing machine or on a vertical area on your long arm. So instead of doing that, we're gonna break it up and quilt it in smaller sections. You'll still get that stunning feather look without all the hassle. So let's check out the area that we're gonna be filling in with this first technique. I'm gonna quilt a few smaller feather pieces, which is gonna be easier to do, and it gives me a little bit more freedom with the design placement. There are so many different options for where you place your feathers on the quilt. Let's audition some different placements to see which ones we like best. To audition the designs before I actually quilt them, I'm gonna use Quilter's Preview Paper. I can place this clear plastic over the fabric and then using a dry erase marker, I can mark out the different designs and see how I like where they go. If I don't like the look of it, I can just simply wipe those markings away. Or if I love how it looks, I can use it to help mark out the placement of the designs on the quilts. So let's get to auditioning. I just have to unroll the plastic, place it over the area I wanna audition and then grab a wet or dry erase marker and start drawing. This is really great because it's gonna help me see real life size, what the designs are gonna look like and really help me visualize the placement of them. So for instance, I could quilt my feathers so that they come out of this area, kind of extending from this block. And this would be a great way to highlight this area of the quilt. And maybe just a nice little basic feather. And the other one can come out the other side. Having them extend from that area is gonna really draw attention to that. Okay, I kinda like this, but let's play around with a little bit more placement and see if we can't figure something out. Quick erase. I could quilt the feathers so that they all go in the same direction and that will give us a look of kind of a continuous feather without having to actually do it. So maybe instead, my feather could go like this. And the next one could come out of here. I kind of like the idea of them all facing the same direction, kind of giving it that look of continuity. In fact, I think what I'll do instead is position this guy so that he comes out of the block like this and have the next one facing that way as well. And it will look almost as if it's going behind the block and make it really nice and easy to quilt. Now these feather sections can be quilted in any size. It really is up to you. I would say pick a size that's comfortable for your skill level. If you feel comfortable quilting with an area this size, don't make your feather larger than that. Let's make it easy on ourselves so that we can have fun with it. Then once I mark my feathers and once I quilt them, then I'll fill in the rest of the area with a filler. These are the star of the show and I definitely want them to pop let me get my water soluble marker. We'll mark out the placement and then we'll get to the quilting. And I'm just gonna mark the spine just because I feel comfortable. Go ahead and adding the petals as I go. If you wanted to though, you could definitely mark out the whole feather. And I'll have my other section kind of coming out here. And the rest of this irregular area is just gonna get some filler. So let's get to quilting. The great thing about already having those guidelines marked is I can jump right into the quilting. And even though I'm gonna demonstrate this with the basic feather technique, you can definitely do it with the custom feather technique as well. It looks just as good. And just like we've seen with the basic feather, I'm quilting the spine and then adding those petals and just quilting that feather. There's so many reasons this technique is so handy. And one of the main benefits is I don't have to reposition the quilt as often. Since I'm quilting it in that smaller defined area, I can go ahead and quilt my feather, complete it, and then move on to the next one. Once I have the feather quilted, then I can add in the filler around it. I gotta make sure I have that main element first and then add the filler. And if I really like how the feather is looking, I'm gonna add a little bit of echoing before I add the filler. That's just gonna help separate it a little bit and let it show off a little bit more. Of course, you could just go straight into the filler and make it about the same size as the feather and that will help it blend in. And since we've already learned the feather meander as a filler design, I'm gonna go ahead and use that to fill in around that design. 
Now I know I say this in every video, but I'm using a contrasting thread color so that you can really see what I'm doing on the camera. But you definitely wanna use a blending thread color for this technique because it's gonna let you see that beautiful feather without seeing all the imperfections that might be there. Then once I'm finished with that feather and filling it around it, I'm just gonna reposition to the next one and continue on. Being able to handle that area while you're there makes it so much more efficient when you're working your way around the quilt. And when you're done, you have feathers quilted in sections that can really draw the eye in a direction or draw it to a particular area. Easier than quilting a long continuous feather, but you still get that stunning wow factor. If the irregular area that you're quilting doesn't have a drastic amount of difference in the width, then you can try technique number two, where we're just gonna fit it in. Quilting a long, continuous feather in an area can be just a little bit trickier, but man, it looks amazing on your quilts. And we can quilt it so that it's wider or narrower to fit the area. It could just be tricky to see where I'm going, so I'm definitely gonna mark out that spine so that I can have a line to follow and build off of. So this is the space I'll be fitting my feather in. Now this area is wider and narrower and wider, so I'm gonna start by marking out my spine. I'm gonna try to keep it roughly halfway in between the area, whether that's a larger area or a more narrow area. And then as I get to the narrower area, I'm still looking at the two sides and trying to keep it towards the center. I'm not stressing out that it's perfectly in the center, but what this is gonna do is give me equal space on both sides of that feather to quilt those petals. Even though my area is wider here than here, that doesn't mean I'm gonna fill this whole thing in with the feather. I'm gonna use some filler to deal with the bigger areas. Using the boundary as a guide in the tighter areas to make sure my feather fits. So let's go ahead and quilt it out and see how it goes. The first bit of this design is just following the drawn line, but since I'm gonna need to reposition the quilt as I move along, I'm gonna take my time and try to keep that line as smooth as I can. Sometimes you might not be able to see quite where you're heading, so just look a little bit behind the needle and trust your hands to move you there. This is probably the biggest drawback about this technique is that I have to reposition the quilt and move along just for that one long spine. But once I get to the end of it, I can start adding my petals and working my way back the way I came. The basic idea of fitting the feather in is I'm fitting it into the narrower parts and then just using filler in any gaps of the wider parts. So I don't necessarily have to put my feather really large in this big area. I can just kind of keep it the same size and then use filler to come back and get that later. For this, I'm gonna use the custom feather technique where I'm quilting them in groups of two and then just filling in that area working along the spine. Just like all the other ones, you can use the basic feather technique as well. At this point, you have an option. I could continue quilting my feather and then come back and deal with this unquilted area later. But since I'm here and since I don't wanna to have to come back, I'm gonna put a pause on quilting my feather, echo my way back and then fill in that area before I move on. Of course, if that's just too much switching back and forth for you, you could definitely just quilt the whole feather and come back and deal with it later. Once that's filled in, I can continue back on with my feather. Now, as my area gets narrower, I want that petal to perfectly fit. So I'm gonna use that boundary as the guideline for the feather. Don't let this freak you out. We already kind of did this in the first week of the challenge when we were filling in the blocks using that defined boundary. We're just quilting that petal out until I get almost to the edge and I'm gonna start my curve. Now in this particular area, we're kind of going around a corner, which we haven't necessarily seen yet. So just know that along the outside of the curve, your petals will be bigger. And later on when we get to the inside, they'll be a little bit smaller. Just fill in the area and move on. I promise it's gonna look fine. And then as I'm kind of starting to leave that narrower area, I'm not gonna worry about extending it all the way to the edge. Although, if you wanted to, you could definitely do that. And just like I did earlier, I'm gonna put a pause on that feather, go ahead and fill in that gap, and then move on. Then once I get to the end, I can echo it back and then start again on the other side. Of course, this echoing means I'm gonna to have to quilt another long line, reposition the quilt. So if you don't like the idea of that, you could just start a new line of quilting at the other side of the feather and start from there. The trick here is to do what's comfortable for you. So you might be wondering, where do you use a technique like this on a quilt? What, when does it matter to fit in that feather? Well, this is something I would do on a quilt where that irregular area is part of the pattern or it's part of the focus of the quilt, not necessarily a background or a negative space. For instance, maybe the blocks come together to make the shape and I wanna enhance that with the feather. This also works really well in areas that are irregularly shaped around the edge. So maybe it's not a smooth, straight area. Maybe it has like points or kind of a jagged edge. Filling it in will just help it kind of smooth it out. 
And then when I'm done, I have a beautiful long continuous feather that's really gonna look great on my quilt. And by fitting it in the areas and using echoing to fill in any gaps, it's gonna really kind of highlight that overall shape. If the area that you're filling in happens to have a lot of drastic variation in the width, then you can try technique number three, which is actually one of my favorites, playing peekaboo with the feathers. Basically, we're gonna quilt the feather so that it looks like it's going behind some of the areas and then popping out of others. This is ideal if you don't want a feather that gets really big and really small and really big because that could be distracting to the overall look of the quilt. So just like with the other line, marking that spine to where it's kind of halfway in that area, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna mark another line a couple inches away from the first one on both sides. And that line is just gonna kind of be the guide of how wide my feather should be. And where this line kind of follows and runs into a block, this will be where my petal won't quite make it. I'll have to make them look like they're going behind. I know it's a little tricky to see, but this is where my spine's gonna go. And I marked two reference lines a couple inches away. That's how wide I want my feather to be. Well, now that I have my registration lines marked, I'm ready to start quilting and show you how to make these feathers play peekaboo. So let's get to it. Just like any other feather, I'm gonna start by quilting along the spine until I get to the other side. Then I'm gonna start adding my petals to one side, working my way back to where I started. I'm using this marked line as a guide to let me know exactly how far I should extend out those petals. But if your petals cross over the line or don't come quite close enough, it's gonna be fine. As I approach the area where my guideline is crossing over my pieced blocks, this is where I'm gonna quilt my petals to look like they're going behind that area. And just as a visual representation, I've kind of marked out those petals where they would go if I were to quilt them normally. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quilt along that line and once I reach that boundary area right here, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna travel along it to get to the next one and return back. Again, quilting my next one, stopping once I run into that boundary, traveling to where the next one would come out and continuing on. And once I remove these markings, all I'll see is that pretty feather looking like those petals are going behind the block. And then once my guideline moves away from that block, I can continue quilting my full petals again. So I'm gonna keep quilting my way along that spine until I get to the end. And once I run into the edge, I'm gonna travel over and then echo my way back to the other side and do the same. And once I get to the other side, we can see that I'm already gonna start off with my guidelines off of the edge. Just like I did before, I'm gonna quilt until I run to the edge, travel, and then come back. It's kind of crazy to me that just a little bit of traveling makes this difficult looking design really easy. Now, stitching along the seam can be a little tricky. So on a long arm, I'll use a ruler to help keep it kind of straight. But I also know that once I'm done and I step back, all I'm gonna see is that beautiful feather. And then once your guidelines reappear in the background area, then you can go back to quilting your petals as normal. And just like with the other feathers, once I finish quilting it, I'll add echoing and filler. And when I'm done, we'll have a beautiful, elegant feather that fills in that irregular area perfectly. And when I'm done quilting, you can see all these crazy marks and things going on. But once the markings are gone, all you see is a beautiful feather that plays peekaboo. Now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel I designed for the challenge, fill in the areas highlighted in red with the different feather techniques we've learned in this video. You can just pick one and use it in all the areas or switch it up. It's totally up to you. And be sure to check out the free downloadable PDF with the quilting tips and diagrams. It will really help you with these techniques. And if you need a little bit more help, check out the expanded resource with even more pages of diagrams and tips. It'll definitely help you out. We'll be back next week with a, another video where I'll show you how to take feathers around border corners. It's gonna be awesome. Until then, happy quilting.